So a couple years ago, I bought a uh, a Grand Prix, and uh, it had uh, has a, a heads up display. And when I got the car, the heads up didn't work, and I thought, whatever, I'll just I'll either replace it, um, you know, I'll fix it or something, no big deal. And everywhere I read said that the uh, I think it's a photo diode that's in there that the, it has a, gets a cold solder joint, and it doesn't work. It's an open circuit. So I took it apart and I fixed it. Um, I looked at the joint, and the solder joints looked they looked okay. They didn't they didn't look bad. And but you know I I you know reflowed the solder on both of them, put it back in the car, not thinking that it was going to fix it. And sure enough, it works. So I've been driving with it like that for a while. But but because I didn't you know take that the old solder off, add new flux, and and you know redo it, um, I'm starting to have problems again where you know you got to whack the dashboard to make the to make the make it come on. And sometimes it's really dim. So I got to do it again, and I'm gonna do it the you know the, the proper way this time. So. If you have uh, if you have one of these, this is not going to be necessarily a how-to, but you can look through and see how I'm doing it, and hopefully it'll help. Now I'm not going to talk too much about taking the dash bar because I'm not going to be responsible for somebody cracking their dash uh, plastic. This you know that's this old, it's very brittle. But basically, first thing you have to do is take out this sensor in the center, and when you do that, um, just it basically just pry it out, and there's going to be a bunch of connectors. You just unscrew them, and they come off. And uh, then, now, this is where people are going to yell at me, but I just use flathead screwdrivers and pop the trim off. There is actual proper trim pieces or you know, trim removers. Uh, if you have a, uh, f a some kind of a plastic, long plastic piece, it'd probably be the best because it wouldn't damage the, uh, damage the plastic for the dash. But I was careful and uh, was able to just pop it all loose. Once you get it loose, uh, you can take it off. And it's, you know, you got to... You gotta, you know, really pull on it and play around. But, but once you get it off, you see there's the heads-up display unit. There's a screw on the right and the left, and they look like this. There's also a uh, connector you have to disconnect. You just push down on there, and it pulls off. And on the right-hand side, there's one as well. And just those two screws, you can reach in and pull it out. So, and there it is. So it's not too bad. Um, I, I would, if from what I remember, getting it out of the car is probably the most difficult part. So let's take this apart. And it's been a while since I've done this, but I think it's just these uh, four Torx screws here. And I remember a long time ago when I first got the car, I looked, and it was on eBay. You could buy them. You could buy used ones. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it is these days, but they were fairly inexpensive and a lot of them were rebuilt so let's take that that lifts off and and by the way you can see there's a lot of dust that builds up in there so you can clean it it is plastic it is a plastic lens so you have to be very careful so use I mean really just use water and there we go so the the connector the up and down on your dashboard is this mirror right here and it moves up and down and that moves the uh, the reflection on off the windshield and you can see there there's the uh, vacuum fluorescent display and that's that's what you see and this is actually everything on here is reversed so check gauge as you can see it's backwards because it's going to be mirrored the part that we need to fix is this one right here so let's see how we're going to how are we going to do this so these are just clips and it's been a while since i've done this and i really didn't take note the first time i did it Be very careful because this plastic is old and it's brittle. Lift that up, and then there's one over here. I'm just going to lift that up, and it pops. Should just pop out. Again, I'm being very careful because of how brittle this is. Maybe I should disconnect this too while I'm at it. There we go. That's that's the whole unit. That's what uh, 
that's what makes this work. So we'll put this under the scope, it'll make it easier to see. And you can tell last time it did not do a very good job. I just kind of chipped away at all the, uh, the coating and uh, and that's that. I, I, I didn't really think, I thought I would be revisiting it and didn't think it would work. So yeah, it's kind of a sloppy job. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I'm gonna do much more this time other than uh, take off the solder and, and clean it up. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit, made it a little bit prettier. That'll help make for a, a better solder joint. And, uh, all right, so, am I, of course, all right, and we'll just try this. All right, so I did some of that off camera because the solder, and I can't reach it under the microscope, um, but got most of the solder off. There's a little bit left on that one leg, but we'll pull this off. Oh, and it fell right out. Now, when you go to, if you do take it out and you want to put it back in, you'll see this little notch here. On the sensor itself, you'll notice there's that little notch. See that little that little thing right there? That's what lines up with with that. Uh, with that dot, so you gotta, you know, which what, what the polarity is. So I'm gonna flip this over and clean that up a bit. And it's gonna be difficult because right now the only thing I have is a conical tip on my on my uh, iron, which I'm not happy about, but it is what it is. there's some fibers left over because I'm just using paper towels. All right, so I'm going to put this back on and I'm going to line that little tab up. And you see a little tabs lined up there. And you can use really whatever you want to uh, hold it in place. Now I'm going to add some flux. I actually already uh, tried soldering one and then I realized I forgot the flux. And usually I don't bother because uh, it, it, obviously it's a flux core. But for this, I want as good a connection as I can get um, because these are known to, known to crack or known to have bad solder joints. And that's that. Make sure that make sure that our uh, piece is actually seated and it's not floating. And it is. It looks a little bit like it is on the on the scope, but it's not. So I'll just clean this up. There we go. That's all you have to do. Now we'll put it back in, uh, clean up any residual flux that's left over. And the other thing you want to make sure is, you see that? You want to make sure that that's nice and clean, the, uh, the glass, the lens. All right, and then we'll just put it back together. That's really all you got to do. And if you want, you can just reflow the solder. You don't have to clean it up, but uh, you know, I did. Might not be up to some people's standards, but it's good enough. And 
there's that. Put the glass back or the cover back on. And that's that. And you'll have to, if you hear it, you'll have to forgive me. The fan next to me is uh, doing all kinds of weird stuff. It's got a bad connection back here. Let's clean the dust off of that. I know you're not supposed to do it with a dry rag, but we're not taking pictures through this. It's just. Uh, There we go. That's all you got to do. Put it back in the car and you should be good to go.